Keep in mind, throughout the course of this video, that at the recording of this, it's January 1st, 2023. January 1st. For all things Halloween, this is Hotformer, and the holiday season has come to an end. It was a great season. And usually when it comes to January and the new year, I have to kind of scrounge around, you know, for that Halloween spooky content. Not today. The Halloween has come to me because Lemax has just released its brand new for 2023 Spooky Town. And boy, oh boy, boils and ghouls, you're in for a treat because this may very well be the best that Lee Max has had to offer in a single year's lineup. And this isn't even the Michaels exclusives yet. We haven't even gotten to that part. Um, I'm excited. You're excited. Well, you're watching. Thank you. Uh, let's jump into this, shall we? As you can see, when you go to their homepage, link in the description, they have their logo, of course. They have their typical uh, little read-up and an amazing amalgamation of cool designs for buildings. Just wait until you see some of these. These are incredible. With only, you see that? 302 days, 6 hours, 26, 28 minutes, and uh, 35 seconds until Halloween. After recording of this, anyways, you're probably watching this a little later than I'm recording it. That makes sense. Up first, the gloom room, which is not one I'm going to talk about much because I already did. You can watch my thoughts on the gloom room in my 2022 Lemax video, or you could just check it out in my store walkthroughs. I did a store walkthrough at Michael's. I talk about and show off gloom room, at least I think I did. Some stores have different things, but Gloom Room here reminds me of The Shining. Looks like that classic 1920s aura, era, aura. Well, I guess it does have an aura, doesn't it? Uh, of spookiness, and it's a, it's a great piece. Kind of on the pricier side, hence why I didn't gravitate to it, but a great piece nonetheless. Katarina's Fashion Show is up next. And as you can clearly see, it is a Dia de los Muertos uh, piece, Day of the Dead, which is big in Mexico and Latin America. Here in the States, it's not really that big of a deal. I don't personally celebrate it, not that I'm against it. It's just not really a thing here. But it is cool. Not my speed for my village, but I can see people uh, eating this up if you're into that uh, type of display. I've yet to see a Day of the Dead display, but I'd be curious to. One of the things I love about this piece, however, uh, despite my criticisms, are the lights that shine up on all these spooky ladies. I actually think that looks really awesome, and I hope they'll use that lighting in the future. Madame Inez is next, which is a single uh, little figurine piece. Now, this character, the weird thing about her is that you could only really display her outside. You can't put her inside a building yet she's in a chair with a table, so the display options are limited. However, the fortune teller thing is popular, especially at places like Michael's or Joann's that sell this kind of stuff, so I think this little figurine will be a decent seller. The autumn sunrise trees have been around, uh, I think they were at Michael's last year, and now coming back as a, as a Lemax staple. I actually picked these up last year, and they're great. Not a lot to say about them. They kind of look like candy corn. They add a nice little orange flare uh, when it gets a little dark in some of those Lemax corners. So uh, the, these are good, and they're cheap. Candy corn street light is candy corn and street light, and that's pretty much it. Lights up, cool. If you if you like that, I assume if you're into the really scary stuff, if you're getting some of these, like the meat grinder one we'll get to in a second, I don't know if you need candy corn by it, but hey, that's just me. Now we're on to our first actual building. This is the Phantom View Apartments, which, boy oh boy, how cool is that? The top there reminds me of the Gozer Temple from Ghostbusters, and then they have all of these awesome sheet ghosts 
big fan of sheet ghosts myself. And one thing I love too is notice how those lights, the purple and the green, really pop against the gray of the building. That's a nice touch, and uh, I really dig this piece. But the really cool feature is that elevator. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Looking for a place to dwell. The most haunting experience you can find. Our gargoyles will keep an eye out for any welcome visitors. Can't the ghost just watch his white noise in peace? Oh, I gotta get out of here. You can run. The elevator is by far the best part of this piece. I won't play the whole thing. My typical criticism with really all of the pieces that involve talking of any sort in the dialogue is that they always have to say the name of the piece. And it irks me, and I know they're not going to change it, and I always talk about it, but they're always like, Phantom View Apartments, uh, Mad Pumpkin Patch. Yes, I'm aware. Up next, we have Samantha's Supernatural Yard Decor. I feel like this is going to be a really hot piece for a few reasons. I really like it because it, it harkens back to the nostalgic um, Halloween decor that you'd, you'd see in yards. It's not really as popular now. You have like inflatables now and the, like, the little LEDs that go on the wall. However, this stuff was really big back in the 70s and 80s, and, well, I, I even think some people decorate it to this day, but it's not as popular. However, this is one of those nostalgic pieces, and I really think that a lot of people are going to dig it. I really like it. Uh, I guess the only thing is if you have a village uh, with actual monsters in it, having a decoration shop with monsters is a little different odd theme thematically but uh yeah go for it now this one doesn't have any audio just got a little video showcasing some of the lights and stuff you can basically see the lights in the picture uh but it does have some cool shots on the website for you to uh check it out this next piece we have here is called the last straw house of the scarecrow now, this is one of the smaller pieces of the year. I mean, it's still very impressive, but what I mean is it, do it doesn't move. There's not really any lights to it. It's one of the lit from the inside porcelain buildings. However, art-wise, the art style is really cool. It's very fun. You don't get a lot of scarecrow pieces, so I can see this being really popular with the people that have a lot of farm stuff. I love the hanging pumpkin up there. And you do have the Scarecrow sitting out there, Scarecrow Joe. So there's a lot of like story potential you could do with this one. And uh, it's a very simple one. Not my favorite of these, but I think it will be popular. Uh, and likewise, I guess the same could be said for this next one. Creatures of the Night Pet Shop, which does have an interesting array of creatures and critters. I actually like that there's bees on uh, the front of it. Kind of weird. I'd love to see some insect uh, pieces, Lemax, if you're watching this. Insect pieces would be awesome. Uh, but you have the werewolf puppies in the window. wonder how much they are. And bees and bats and cats. It's not like a crazy smorgasbord of, of monster characters, because I have seen some of the pieces that have like a bunch of different monsters. You'll see one in a minute. But uh, for what it's worth, I think this one's a cute one. It's not too scary. It's, it's right on the border between weird and fun. Now, let's talk about the, uh, the big ticket uh, hot commodity item. At least I assume it will be. But also perhaps the best item of the year, in my humble opinion, the Full Moon Diner. This thing is incredible. The animation on it, the art, the art style, the way it looks. It has a, a nice 1950s vibe. It has a great werewolf vibe. We don't really get a lot of werewolf pieces when it comes to the Lemax stuff, but this one 
I think has made up for that lack because um, it's it's awesome. You can see the detail, you can see the full moon up there, you can see that great sign, the werewolf up there in that little bubble, and uh, the inside diner with the werewolves eating. No silver utensils used on the premises. It's great stuff. It has a great sense of humor to it. And uh, check this out. The Full Moon Diner. A perfect place to get a midnight snack. I love how the moon, the sign Doesn't moves matter. to reveal the moon. How long you stay? That's awesome. We're open all night. The sign changes like three ways because it's a trifold sign. Because it's good exercise. <laughs> what do you call a werewolf magician? A hairy Houdini. <laughs> I do like the music. Again, I could I could go without the talking, but the music's nice. Beautiful moon views. Stop by for a change. Oh, that's cool too. I didn't notice that. Great piece. Now, I'm going to imagine that this piece is going to have a hefty price tag, but I think out of all of the more expensive ones we've seen in the last few years, with all the animation, I mean, there's a lot of animation on this. You have, like, the spinning wheel, the hands coming out, the, the full moon thing, the sign turning, the werewolf. I mean, there's so many different moving parts to it that this seems like whatever price it will be will be justified because there's a lot going on here. It's, it's great. It's a great piece. I'm really astonished at uh, how fantastic the full moon diner is. I'd have to imagine this is going to be on the, a lot of people's favorite list as is this next one, which has a really cool, unique animation to it. This is the Mystery Meat Canning Company. Uh, and it's got a great Acme grinder. Uh, it's got a little guy that spins the wheel. It's got birds up there. Uh, you can see the pipes leading to it, uh, leading to the grinding area. You have the little longhorn skull. All in all, it looks great. And uh, I could see it going really well with some of those um, wasteland type uh, pieces that we've gotten the last couple years. But the real standout of this piece is that brain up there because watch what this thing does. It is pretty cool. You see that? Look at that brain. It like it's like uh, it's like a jelly brain. That's great. Also, there's a Frankenstein monster on the wheel, but in the picture it's a ghost, so I wonder which one it actually is. I do enjoy the theming a lot, too. Great theming. Great piece. Those last two were pretty big, so let's tone it back, scale it back just a little bit. Let's talk about some of the lit buildings. The Trick or Treat, If You Dare house is um, a really simple, yet in my humble opinion, very effective Trick or Treat neighborhood style house. I know this is one of the most popular themes that Lee Max does, and for good reason. I think it's a very nostalgic theme and it works really well. Uh, it's, it's very simple. You have the, the hay on the windows, you have a lot of Grim Reapers, a lot of Grim Reapers, and a nice little trick-or-treat station with some black cats and a witch. It's just a lit building, just an on-off switch. Again, very simple, but I think it's going to be very popular, as those types of pieces traditionally are. This next one, a little more complex and a little more creepy, the House of Shadows, which uh, looks to be some kind of ghoul, ghost, zombie, abandoned house. Very creepy, uh, very dilapidated. Uh, it's definitely seen better days and uh, could probably use a new um, 
a real estate agent, if you ask me. But I love the red accent with the black. I love the the elegant detailing along the window sills and everything. It looks great, and uh, there is a video to go along with it. I don't think it has any sound necessarily, but you can see how the lighting in there works. It kind of glows and fades in and out. Again, check out the whole video of that one for yourself, but those shadows in the window are so cool. I love when Lemax does that. That's a great treat. Another one that I don't think has any audio to it is going to be the Foreboding Abode. This is a fortune-telling one. We got one last year at Michael's that was an exclusive, and it was pretty great. And this one is right out of the same vein, pretty much, pun intended. You can see the eye, the all-seeing eye right there in the middle, with a lot of the fortune teller gags surrounding it, palmistry, and the crystal ball up there, I think, is a highlight. And all of these candles, which actually really flicker, and I think that adds to the piece. If you look in the little video, you can see all of the candles kind of waning, and you have that nice ball glowing. It's really neat stuff. Even the eye glows red. That is a cool piece. Again, that one is going to be popular. The fortune telling stuff and the trick or treat stuff is really popular. I like a little bit more on the creepy side than those two themes, but I think they're safe and I think Lee Max played it really well. Speaking of a little creepier, let's talk about the Gothic Hills Funeral Parlor, which reminds me of the haunted house I did last year. How fitting. This one is, uh, again, kind of simple. You have the skeletons, you have the, the coffin. Uh, it is more of that brick look, more of that uh, gray, kind of like the apartment building, but that gray really allows for these other colors and the lights to pop on it. It is uh, a lighted building. Again, no sound. There is a video. Again, it just kind of highlights the lighting in it. And I do like that Lemax has added in these videos where the light kind of dims so you can see what it would look like in a dark and a bright environment, which is really, really special. Coming down here, this is one of my favorite ones. If the werewolf one is objectively the best, this one may be my subjective favorite, maybe? I don't know, the werewolf one's pretty dope, the grinder one's pretty awesome, but this one is in the top three for me. The Haunted Aquarium. Now, I don't know if it looks haunted per se, I think it's just more overtaken by strange sea life. We don't get a lot of the creepy nautical stuff, and I really wish we did because it has a great aesthetic to it. The fisherman over there is awesome, the, uh, the great bubbling canister right there in the front with the tentacles and the piranhas. I just love this piece. I love the bright colors and I'm a sucker for green. So I definitely am going to be gravitating to this. This is a lighted building too. Uh, so there is no audio. I did think if they could do anything for this, they could add bubbling sound effects like <laughs> they could add that kind of noise to it. Uh, and it might fare a little better, but I really don't think it needs it. I think the colors and the lights are going to do this one justice. I, I just really dig it. Now, the only thing is, I don't know if there is an accessory piece to go with that one. Let me look. I don't think there is. It would have been cool to get, like, a, um, Creature from the Black Lagoon-esque Gilman type of character, and I don't see one here. Uh, so that's unfortunate, but... The piece is great. The piece is awesome. I love the Haunted Aquarium. Might be my favorite one. Up next, the Pumpkin Cottage. Not a ton to say about it. It's a pumpkin that's made into a house. It's again an on-off switch one. But the pumpkin stuff always sells. So they know what they're doing here. You even have the black cat crossing the path up here. So there's bad luck uh, in them hills. But uh, great piece, very simple, not a whole lot for me to uh, commentate on it. Likewise with this next one, also a cool piece and a little bit different. The Skeleton Cottage, which has this really cool chimney made of skulls. That's dope. That is, that is cool. And all of these bones along it, 
I wish it had a little more grime to the bones, or maybe blood or something. Or if the whole thing was made of bones, it just seems to be bones on a cottage. But as it stands, this is a cool piece. I would like to see how this is used in a display. Maybe it's back off in the woods a distance, off in the woods a hair. Would make for uh, a really spooky scene out there. And again, there have been so many little skeleton figurines that I think there's a lot of opportunities for matching that with those skeletons. Another cottage, I think there's just multiple cottages this year. This is the ghost cottage. I like the ghosts. I like the sheet ghosts. You can never go wrong with them. They're an iconic symbol of the holiday. And it is purple, which I think is a, is a great color to go along with Halloween. Purple and green go really well with the holiday, as do the iconic orange and black. And then we have the Witch Cottage, the Wanda Cottage, uh, if you will, which is kind of more of a fantastical, whimsical one. But I gotta say, this one's pretty cool because it accents that brown really well with the green on the leaves. You have the, the evil tree, you have Wanda, I'm assuming here, and the black cat. Spin it around. That is a cool one. More earthy, more earthy. So... Lemax did a great thing here and just had four different cottages for anyone's taste. You're smart, Lemax. You're smart. And now most of the big pieces are out of the way. We're going to look at the accessory pieces now. Up first is the Haunted Cemetery Statue. This might be one of my favorite accessories solely for the fact that it is very creepy looking. It looks like a, a professional type of Halloween prop that you would get and display at your house. Uh, but this is just a tiny little bugger, and I love the cemetery stuff. I collect a lot of the little tombstones, so this is going to be perfect for my display. And I think displays in general could use a creepy angel, really. Halloween crows, a fence line piece. The little witch hats on the crows are funny. Again, not a ton to say about it. Likewise with Spooky Owls here, not a ton to say about these pieces. They are very woodland, if I had to describe it in a word. Spooky Owls would go well with the Wanda Cottage up there. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of mix and match options. And that's the great thing about this hobby, and the great thing about Lemax is, there's so many different varieties of characters and buildings and accessories and lights to choose from. So every village looks different, and I love seeing all of them. If you have a cool village display, by the way, send me an email of it. I have my email in the description, hauntform at gmail.com. I would love to see and comment on your awesome displays. This, okay, this is a, this is a different kind of accessory, because I've seen a lot of custom ones of these, non-official Lemax ones, but this is an official haunted house billboard. This is so cool. 66 Ave, of course, 66 Annual, I thought it said Avenue, excuse me. Haunted House, Prepare for a Scare, Elm Street, 1313, $2 admission. I love the lights on it. That is a great one. That, I think more than anything, is going to sell really fast, like hotcakes. So if you want any accessory, that's it. It's kind of like that tree house from a few years ago. Some of the accessories just sell better than others. Creepy Bulletin would go well with that trick-or-treat scene, as it would go well with the Haunted House billboard. Pumpkin Snowman, well, it doesn't, it doesn't really look like a snowman. It looks more like the totem of the speak no evil, hear no evil, see no evil. Uh, it's okay. I don't know. It looks a little off to me for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe maybe it's because it is snowmen. Technically, they're stacked up and they're skeleton hands. That one's a, kind of a miss for me. An accessory form. I don't know. It's the only thing so far that I'm a little off on, but someone will like it. Haunted tree trunks, on the other hand, are dope. Uh, I, I love the haunted trees. We don't get a lot of haunted trees, uh, especially for Lemax. We've had a couple. A lot of the trees are just kind of simple, um, creepy, withered trees, but I like the ones with the faces because there's a lot you can do with them. 
and they do look like they light up, so a, a lit accessory is always great. Which van life, I'm going to open this one because this looks kind of interesting. It's something of a camper with the witch sitting outside. The purple and the orange are really strong, which are kind of those witch colors. This is a great one, a great accessory for the witch fans. And it does have a little video here just to show off those lights, but again, no sound or anything. Uh, no fancy light programming, it's just kind of a steady on, but simple works for these types of things. Coffee bar? Okay, this one's funny because uh, it's at the cemetery and they're drinking the coffee and, um, oh, coffin bar, I thought it said coffee bar. That makes more sense. I have not been to a coffee bar in my life, but I have been to a coffin bar. I'm just kidding. This is dope. The zombies and the skeleton with the with the mixer. I love it. I love it. Oh, and they turn and cheer. Whoa. I was not expecting that. I thought it was just a steady on type thing. Okay, that made it even better. That's pretty cool. That's good. Lee Mac, so far, you're killing it this year. You're really killing it. I. What can I say? I, I, let me know in the comments if you agree. I would have to imagine. This is a pretty great year. Pumpkin Patch Train. Another one that I think is going to sell really fast. The pumpkin stuff and the amusement park stuff kind of goes in tandem with Limax, and this is one such example. A train is actually a pretty good idea. Uh, I don't believe it makes any noise. The pumpkin train just kind of spins in a circle, and it lights up. But when you have that kind of carnival stuff, or especially if you're mixing that with any type of farm aesthetic, you need something that kind of brings those together. And I feel like pieces like this are that middle ground that you can work with. So that, that's a good one. Now we just have a couple of smaller pieces, the creepy covered bridge, uh, very effective little bridge display, the newly deads. Oh, I love that one. That's cool. The, the carriage is great with the winged horse. The Pegasus, if you will. Very creepy. Uh, the rotten candy stand, again, goes back to that amusement park thing like I was saying. That usually uh, is a good seller, usually pretty popular. Another one, the pumpkin patch vendor. That's cool. I like the colors on that and the spider and everything. Then you have Day of the Dead accessory with the bride and groom. Wolfie Eats Out. Uh, I dig this one too. It would go great with the werewolf one, especially if you don't have a werewolf, because they don't make a lot of little werewolf figures, so this one would be great to include with that, that full moon uh, diner. No chocolate for you? Yeah, um, don't, don't give your dog chocolate. That's probably not a good idea, unless you want a ghost dog. Scared Tenant would go well with the apartment building, and I also just really like the look of that ghost, the sheet ghost. Grave Digger and Body Bag. Ooh, that's a creepy one. I like that. That's good for a cemetery. As is, lost his head. Look at that. A, a, uh, a headless horseman type of character, if you will, with the black hat and all. And an owl. Spooky Carnival Date. Uh, again, you have the skeletons. The Pumpkin Witch. Oh, I see they're building like a, they're building a snowman, but it's a witch. Nothing wrong there. <laughs> we're, we're mixing holidays. Life of the Party, uh, which I, I think could go with Gloom Room. It could go with a couple of them, really. I guess it could even go with Day of the Dead if you wanted. Wake the Dead. Oh, you have them looking. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm dead. Yeah, that sucks. And then a lot of these are the Michaels returning ones. The Raven Hill, Future Looks Dark. Toil and Trouble Ale House, The Brewery, Dancing in the Moonlight, Everybody's Feeling Right, Roaring Roadster, Night Out on the Town, and Spooky, okay, Spooky Pumpkin Express looks new, is it? I don't remember this one, or maybe I just glossed over it last time. I don't know, someone will tell me, but uh, if it is new, that's, that's going to be a great seller. It's always the pumpkin stuff. That goes, but that is understandable because uh, 
Halloween is kind of the pumpkin fall day, if you will. Whoo! With that, we have wrapped, taking a look at the Limax Spooky Town 2023 items. I'm so excited that we already got this in January of all times, but which of these pieces, if you had to pick one, is your absolute favorite? And do you agree with me and my sentiment that this year is the best for Limax? Let me know in the comments below. Consider subscribing if you love Halloween and horror stuff and spooky and scary and Limax all year. I am doing this in January after all. Thank you for watching and remember, for all things Halloween, this is Hauntformer.